session. So I'm going to be carrying on with this monochrome study. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is we're expanding our palette a bit, and I'll be talking about the colors we're using as I go through it. So you'll just be watching, really. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of a kind of thin wash over where we were last week with some raw umber. Maybe not quite that thin. So I'm layering a little bit more on. And I'm kind of forcing it across the surface. going to give us a nice sort of warmish base. Not quite as orangey as the burnt umber we used last week. But a warm base to start painting over. There. And you can do that, this sort of thing, like with any kind of brush work you like, whatever like kind of appeals to you. Uh, whatever maybe sometimes feels good in the moment as you're painting it. Yeah, I'm generally liking the look of that. And I'm going to be swapping to a smaller brush. That was a kind of medium-sized bristle. I'll talk about the brushes in the description as well. Swapping to a smaller brush. I'm going to clean it off because I was using this to paint something else a little bit earlier in the day. And now what I want to do is take a little bit more of that burnt umber, uh, sorry, the raw umber, a thicker amount of it, and start kind of laying that in where the painting gets darker. So over the, the bits that we already had that were pretty dark from, from last week. So partly sort of washing over. So it's a little bit of a kind of wet into wet approach. And we're going to be building on top of this as well. So some of these bits are going to go even darker as I go with this painting. But it's very like progressive. It's, it's very nice to like work with these sorts of monochrome studies because everything's kind of limited. So if I want to go say a bit darker generally down this side of the face, I can just start washing a bit more burnt umber over it, but I've still got the, the kind of underpainting below holding everything together because I'm essentially kind of glazing these these top tones over. So it really is a lot like drawing with paint. That's sort of the idea behind it. And you can do this as a the basis for any painting that you're working on. Um, I often use these sorts of sort of underpainted structures to to then paint over in color. It doesn't have to remain a, a monochrome. But I'm really just thinking about the shadows, thinking about the half tones. So there's parts of the painting which aren't in kind of full dark at the moment. And then we're going to be building some some darks into this and some highlights as well. We go a little bit darker here with the, the raw number two. So last week we were just using burnt umber and then just for the first part of this week we're just using raw umber. But we are going to be getting in quite soon to adding a bit more some darker values and some some lighter values as well.
maybe a bit of a thicker layer over the top part of this knot. This I'm definitely going to leave a bit looser because it's going to be painted in more detail in later passes, later sessions. And for the most part today we're going to be focusing more on the darks. And then next week I'm going to release a video that's actually going to be from the same session. So there's all going to be one session, this fast pass of it. Where I then add some some hot lighter sort of portions as well. Um, but we're going to be just gradually building up. You see these passes of darks, and it's really gradual, so it's it's really honestly very manageable. If you're kind of just getting into oil painting, oil painting is a super super forgiving medium once you sort of strip it back to its simplest elements. I'm just using mineral spirits as my my medium. Like last week, I've just used raw umber this week as my only pigment I've used so far. I'll be adding some more in a bit, but currently just sticking with raw umber. I'm layering this over burnt umber, and it's created like already a little bit of a, a sort of nice color shift, those, that combination. Um, can build up a little bit more raw umber here, and because it's, it's sort of wet into wet because of the, that initial wash I did at the beginning, Everything's kind of nice and smudgy and I'm kind of allowing it to be sort of smudgy. And then when I work the whites over, it's going to be smudgy as well. So immediately we're getting, and you don't always want this effect, but if you want a kind of soft effect, a soft sort of look with your paintings, this is a, a really great way to achieve it. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. I'm going to go to a much smaller brush now. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber, not just raw umber. And we're going to start feeling into the, the really dark bits of shadow a bit more. I'm also going to take this opportunity to make start making some adjustments to shapes as well. So this eye, for instance, really needs a much more open feel to it. There, so that's really kind of describing the the eye a lot better. I'm going to be going in near the end of the session with more more black. At the moment, I'm just using <coughs> the burnt umber here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. So this eye, I want to get that to match. So.
and that's looking a little bit better. We'll have an opportunity to kind of go back over and even rework all this stuff further. So I don't worry too much if it's, I'm sure like when you're watching someone else paint, you can always see issues with their painting, but I'm not too fussed if like it's not perfect at this point. Um, Cause it's this process of just kind of gradually developing a piece. And you just kind of go for the best best you can at each pass. And with oil paints, you can always go back over. So I know that like, I'm not too fussed if things aren't perfect, so I know I can go back and correct things if need be. Maybe thickening, thickening this lip as well. So this is quite a big shape change because I didn't actually really get the thickness of the lip shape. Or it's kind of curving down into shadow in my first pass. And that really helps, helps quite a lot. Getting all sorts of smudges you may notice at the, the edge of the canvas, but I'm not fussed at all about that. I could use a mile stick, but because of this, the point in the painting, mile stick just kind of keeps your hand off the the surface for anyone who doesn't know but because of the point of the painting I'm at I'm not too fussed it might even make some textures I kind of like so I don't mind too much what it does to the the surface Yeah, I'm liking the look of that. And the final thing I want to do is, so I think I've got most of the kind of fundamental parts of the shadows developed here, maybe go a little bit darker. bit darker down 
well, I'm doing this cheek right now because I got distracted by it. <laughs> but I wanted to go darker just down here. Yeah, that's looking better. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the, the clothing. We'll kind of, we can do it in another pass. Just a little kind of suggestion of what's going on there. But I want to start introducing just a little bit of black as well. One place the black is definitely going to be is inside the the eyes where we've got the pupils, and then also some darker accents around the eyes is also like underneath this eye, a bit darker. This edge as well, places like the nostrils. Corners of the mouth. And then through the hair a bit as well, particularly sort of down this edge of the hair. I'm going to start developing these darker tones in the hair, but I'm not going to push them too far because once we've done the lights um, in, a, in a kind of subsequent pass, we'll be doing black lasers, which is something else I really like. Um, and that's going to then add these darker darks. But in a way, with black lasers, they tend to remain a lot richer, whereas if you're sort of blending black into the... <clears throat> Blending black into these browns, they, they kind of go a little bit, can go a little bit kind of drab grayish. We don't necessarily want that. So I'm just getting it in to have a little bit of a feel for like how dark is it going to go? Because we don't know how dark the piece is going to go until the black's kind of fully in place and play. It's going to be down here as well. So now that it's kind of more there, I have a bit of an idea of how how it's going to work, um, but yeah, that's that's going to be it for this session. So we're going to be I'm actually going to carry on painting, but it's going to be split into next week, just to keep all this stuff manageable and kind of organised. And the so the focus of this week has been getting that wash over, and then starting to get these darks in. And then when I come back, or when you watch next week, so look out for that video. Um, I'll be adding the lights to this painting. Um, so that's going to be adding, basically building up some of the lights with kind of more white burnt on the mixtures. Um, so heightening essentially. It's a bit like if you're working in white chalk, you're sort of layering whites, or if you're working in pastels um, next to the darks. So that's what, going to be what we're doing next week, and then we'll leave that to dry. And once... Um, once that dry, that's dried, we will then be doing further passes. So as I say, black glazes is one thing we can do. Um, we can do more correction passes. So nothing set in stone when you're working in oils. It's really great that way. People often get really intimidated, but really don't be intimidated by it. Especially if you look at this process, it's so far we've used three colors, just burnt umber, raw umber and black. Working with the white surface, um, working with the relationship between sort of toning it, working into the tone, 
having the, the painting from last week underneath that kind of anchors everything a little bit, which is nice. Um, all those sorts of things, they, they all kind of help um, keep everything manageable. So really just try to follow the process. Um, don't get too hung up on anything in particular, any, anything that maybe goes wrong or you struggle with because you can always make corrections. It's always, always possible to correct oils. Um, and, and in that way, I think it, to me, it's a lot easier than a lot of other mediums that people start with, like watercolor. Um, to a certain extent, uh, acrylics are correctable as well, but um, they dry so quickly, you can't necessarily adjust like on the surface in quite the same way. Um, so yeah, oils are really great. I think a really great way to learn, but especially if you have these sorts of limited palettes um, to start with. So you're not using like a whole palette that you get maybe as a starter kit. You're just getting a few nice paints, so like Michael Harding or Old Holland, um, Winsor Newton can be fine. Some sort of simple paints, the cheaper colors, there's a black, we're going to be using black, white, burnt umber, raw umber, black. And that's it for this piece. Um, so it's just four, four pigments, pretty cheap, but you want to get good quality ones, so you get a right feel for the paint, um, just as a, a side note. So yeah, we're going to leave it for this week. Um, look out for next week's video because we're going to be working straight after this. So if you want to follow the process, you, you maybe want that. Yeah, I could leave it to dry and then do what I'm going to do next week, but um, it can also be done wet into wet. And I thought I'd, I'd show that because often stuff is left to dry. So yeah, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys soon. Um, if you want to see more videos from myself, other tutors, students, etc., you can subscribe to the channel. Um, and you can also click the link through if you want to see the sorts of paid qualifications that we offer. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I will see you all soon.